and Richard, is it Giesner or Geisner? Giesner. Giesner, Richard Giesner has kindly agreed to run the meeting. So thank you, Richard, and welcome everybody who's here. Take it away. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Deborah, could you do the roll call? Certainly. Robinson Walker? Here. Giesner? Here. Carter? Here. Clayton? Here. Rudder? Here. Wright? Here. And Allie? Here. And then we need to have uh, a vote on the approval of uh, the minutes minutes from September 8th. It's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. uh, can I get a motion for approval? I, I place a motion for approval of the minutes. Second. 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 And uh, just by voice, Deborah, or unanimous? Or just... Certainly. Um... Does everyone agree? Yes. Yes. Understood. Right. Uh, thank you. Uh, and now we have the resident form. Uh, so to read a brief missive in regards to instructions uh, to speak during the residence forum, residents have up to three minutes to address the committee. The committee does not directly answer questions posed by speakers during the residence forum. But it does hear the viewpoints and ideas presented and members do consider them as they act during the meeting. Speakers must conduct themselves with proper decorum, consistent with community standards that would not be offensive to a reasonable person, as determined at the sole discretion of the GOP. Participants may not engage in personal attacks, threats of any kind, or any other disruptive behavior. Speakers violating rules may be expelled from the meeting and precluded from speaking at future meetings as determined by the board. In person forum instructions, complete the residence forum, slip and give your slip to the chair, copies or handouts or anything else you'd like to include, give that to the chair as well. Zoom forum instructions, if you wish to address the committee, use the raise hand feature or press star nine if connecting on the phone. Residents are welcome to type their comment in the Q&A chat feature up until the start of the residence forum. Please wait your turn and once unmuted, state your full name and Ross Moore address. Once the forum has begun as it is now, no further or additional resident comments will be considered. And to begin, we have one person on Zoom as well as seven or eight individuals in person. I will begin with Zoom. Virginia, I am unmuting you. Go ahead, you have three minutes to address the committee. Virginia Ralph, are you wanting to speak? No, I'm done. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I am on the fitness center advisory committee and use the gym regularly, but also use the pool regularly. Um, for a therapeutic reason, I have fibromyalgia. Um, music helps with tempo and movement. And there's a lot of information out there about the benefit of that when you're doing water exercise. <clears throat> there is a system at the pool called the Q project, the Q thing. Um, there is a cue for music. And when you come in, if music is playing and you would like to hear something that you'd like to hear, you can ask if the cue is taken and if it's not, um, you can choose your music or if you like the music that's playing. It's a 30 minute section. And um, if somebody is already in that queue at that time, you can request the next queue. And why can't we just say, if you don't want music, you can say, ask for the queue and ask for no music for 30 minutes. I think that would work. It's a system that I believe was enabled by Hideo and has been working well, no problems. And 30 minutes of no music, I don't think would trouble anyone. So that's my two cents worth. And I hope we don't lose music altogether. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. <clears throat> okay, the first in forum, first in speaker, if you be so kind as to stand up and project your voice towards the device in the front of the room. Nancy Castillo? Castillo. Castillo, thank you. I'm here not because I'm angry, but because I'm sad. 
My favorite thing at Rossmore, listening to Golden Oldies in the warm pool, has been taken away from me, and I'd really like it back. I was at the pool one day recently when the music was silenced. There was an eerie and negative silence about the place. It made me unhappy. My husband and I swim two to three times a week, usually at midday, so this policy impacts us directly. I'd like to see the policy changed, or at least not in effect during prime time when most people are impacted. To confirm my suspicion that the decision had been made in the interest of the few, I recently sat outside the fitness center on two separate days and asked people what they thought of the new music policy. Based on my informal survey of around 100 people, I'd say that 5% were neutral, 5% preferred silence, and the remaining 90% preferred music, most of them preferring the Golden Oldies station. I took notes on people's comments and submitted them to the committee separately. A more formal and valid survey should be undertaken and there should be more discussion on how to handle the preferences of any given minority. As the former executive director of Freight and Salvage Coffee House in Berkeley, I understand that compliance with ADA regulations is important and I don't want Rossmore to incur any legal risk. Generally, music venues provide earplugs for people sensitive to loud music and listening devices for the hearing impaired. Never is there the suggestion that the music volume should be lowered or silenced because it is, after all, a music venue. I'm not sure whether different policies apply to an exercise facility. Because music enhances exercise, can the pool be considered a music venue? If people want music, the minority that do not want music or prefer more meditative music can wear earplugs or waterproof headphones, not the rest of us, which I suspect is the majority. It is also doubtful that most Rossmore people would purchase and wear headphones, so this is really not a viable solution. All you get is lots of people exercising in silence who would benefit and prefer it if there was music on. For myself, I would never wear headphones in the pool. Someone wearing headphones sends out a message that they can't hear when someone greets them, don't want to be bothered, and prefer being isolated. The New York Times recently published a study talking about the benefits of talking to strangers. A pool filled with people wearing headphones is not a happy social place to be for most people. Obviously, the type of music played is key, and there should be some policy around what type of music is allowed. A policy has been adopted. Anyone can request any type of music, and it will be played for a half hour. This policy, too, has some problems. You have 20 seconds. Loud banging music is not appreciated by most people at Rossmore, so we should have a menu of options that they choose from that would be acceptable to most Rossmore people. Do you have a copy of that, please? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Emerson. I have a multiple copies, actually. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Next up, we have Anne Plato. and Plato 3711 Terra Granada Drive. Um, I've been doing water aerobics for 25 years. I've only been here for the last four. I have never been in a water aerobics class where there wasn't music. If you check with the instructors on any of our water aerobics classes, there is music. Um, when I exercise on my own, which is what I prefer, if there's no music, I am looking at the clock and I am forcing myself to go, keep going. It's another five minutes, another five minutes. If there's music, I am moving with it. I mean, I am no longer at a point where I can go dancing around on terra firma, but I can <laughs> in the water. And working out to the music, I work hard, and the people around me are also working hard. Um, there's one lady in the pool who walks and walks and walks, and she is singing every song that comes out. You can watch her lips move. And since we're not wearing headphones, which I do in the summer at the dollar pool so that I have my music, but as people will tell you in the dollar pool, I don't hear them, I don't join them, I can't talk to them if I have my music on. So having the music, and I, I've given you two pieces of paper, two articles that I pulled out, 
that even swimmers, and we, I guess we don't normally think about swimmers listening to the music, but swimmers also will move in terms of the music and will develop a better, more consistent rhythm. And I'm at the pool approximately five days a week, and it would be a misery if it were in total silence. Thank you. Next up, we have Joyce Curry. Uh, Joyce Curry, I live at the Waterford, 15 and a half years in the pool there, uh, almost every day. And uh, the Dalai Lama was asked what music he liked best, and he said, silence. Um, I enjoy jazz and gentle music that doesn't insist on my attention because my attention is mine to direct and I don't like <laughs> This is really offensive going to the pool. And it hurts, it, it uh, hurts emotionally. I often sing to myself too, I don't know about this lady, <laughs> but I sing songs like in the quiet of this moment, I am at peace on this well. So for me, the pool is not just exercise, it's also emotional comfort and relief. Um, I've been through the illness and death of two husbands since living at the Waterford and coming to the pool peacefully has been a great help. Now, I like cool jazz and even the golden oldies if they're not played too loud because I can work with that. I like the space in jazz. It doesn't insist that I do this or that. And I'm happy to that uh, people in exercise classes have music that gives them tempo. But to me, the earplugs don't begin to work. If you've ever tried it, they just don't do it. But um, people can have whatever music they like by using headphones, and many people do. So I like comfortable, smooth, gentle music or quiet so that I can be at peace while I'm moving in the water. Thank you. Next up, we have Marcia McLean. Hi, my name is Marcia McLean. I live at 2709 Golden Rain Road. Um, I have lived here seven years, almost eight years, and so I love going to the pool. One of the things I think is really important is how incredible the lifeguards are. What an fabulous, fabulous job they do. They really understand everybody's needs. So, for example, if I go in and say, can I do Goldie's on these, they have a list. So if somebody comes in and said, I would like to do quiet, they can do quiet. But to arbitrarily choose two hours every day from 11 to 1, no music makes no sense. Now, I could understand if people were not, the staff was not cooperative. There were these wonderful couples that they would come in and do ballroom dancing. The minute they walk in, the staff knew they would change it. And we all loved it because here was this couple ballroom dancing. There's a woman that comes in and she loves jazz and she jumps and she does that. For me, the pool was very important and particularly being able to walk because I had a very severe back injury. And so that's what helped. So I think what, what's important is the arbitrariness of what was done. I mean, I think, I think that if somebody doesn't want to listen to music, that's fine. The staff will do that. I mean, they are so kind. Somebody walks in and they immediately go and get the treadmill. So it's not like we're dealing with strippers people. So I just suggest that if somebody has a problem, the staff and you guys can come up with that and just say, okay, 
whenever that person is there, there's no music. It's not a big deal. But to be subject to the will of one for the will of many is not fair. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Stephanie Seminole. Stephanie? I think she left. Okay. Someone who left. Thank you. Next, we have Donna Lemming. Liming. Liming. I'm Donna Liming. I've lived here 26 years. <laughs> Give me by <five>, one. <laughs> and I have always used pool, but lately it's become a vital thing because of the normal activity that I've been uh, engaged in because of my arthritis. And I have found that by going every other day around the noon hour, which is the best time for me to go, is uh, the time I need to go with music because the music gives me incentive to uh, to bounce right along. Whereas if it's no music, I lag and I get what the other lady said about watching the clock and trying to get one more laugh and before I give up. But if I have the music, I don't care what kind it is, whether it's golden or rap jazz or anything. <laughs> Comments that are sort of a beat, I can get my 65 laps done and I feel a lot better for it. And that's why I need to have music physically and emotionally as well. It gives me a great lift. So I'm a proponent of having music, especially during the last show, which is my, my uh, most convenient time to go. Thank you. Thank you. And Mark, did you want to have Carl. your car? What's your first and last name? My name is Carl K A D R L Engdahl E N G D A H L, and I'm on Stanley Hall. Great, thank you. Go ahead. Um, I didn't sign up to speak because I I wrote a letter to the editor and that was published and. Uh, um, I was told that this would be considered at this meeting, where, which I applaud. I think things need to be decided in a democratic way and not arbitrarily. Um, and uh, I wanted to come to be sure that the right things were said and it's all been said. So I don't really have anything in addition to say. I, uh, well, one thing I would say is we love to listen to the music but we also love to talk to each other. And if we wore earplugs, we couldn't. And, uh, um, you know, we talk about the music. One of us uh, really knows the music and they we're going, what is that? You know, we know we know it, but we don't know who did it or, and he fills us in. So it's, you know, the combination of the people and the music are, are good for me. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, did you want to say a few words or? No, I actually thought I was at the fitness meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to put forward Jerry. Do you guys know Jerry? Yeah, he's never he's been here for like 20 some odd years. He's never been on the fitness board. I am very sad that he's not. Damn, this is off subject. I know, sorry. <laughs> but I love the music. Yeah. All right. We love it. All right. Mr. Chair, that concludes our yeah. forum. All right. Uh, thank you, Deborah. Um, chair's report. I'm going to take this opportunity to make a plea. Uh, we need a secretary. Uh, like all of us here, I volunteered because I wanted to help our community. Our, com our committee tasks are to advise GRF board about the use of the pools and about policies and rules related to the pools. Being secretary allows you to be even more of a help. The workload is light. Take notes during the meeting, write them up on Simbi, and tell Heather they're ready. That's it. It takes me about an hour to write them up. I could show somebody how to use Simbi in under an hour. It's not a very hard program at all. And that's my report. Uh, do we have any correspondence or announcements? So you have all been provided with copies of uh, correspondence that we've received, including through today in uh, relation to mainly the topic that was just discussed, uh, music at the pool, which you'll be talking about on your agenda. Okay, I'll put the attendance reports. 
So if, for the month of December, we are down to just the Tice pool because uh, Hillside and Dollar both close at the end of November. So we don't have specific attendance reports because the report for Tice is combined with the fitness center. I did include the manager's report from the fitness center. Uh, this is included in the uh, fitness advisory packet each month. So I thought, thought it'd be good to include in your packet you will see in that report that again, it's attached that for the month of December, we had 17,280 visits uh, to the facility. Many of those are aquatic users. Uh, the peak this last year was 18,505 in October. Just for some context back in 2019, before we did get to the pandemic, that routinely that number was over 20,000 visits. So we still have a ways to go to get back to where we were uh, pre pandemic times, but it has slowly over this past year been been making progress. Uh, in relation to the pools, we do have a new aquatics instructor that we just hired on. Um, they are teaching a deep water aerobics class. So that is a, a new class that you'll be seeing. I believe it is uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. I don't have the exact time, but it falls uh, around 12 or 11, I believe. So you'll start to see that. If you haven't taken that and you're looking for another uh, aquatics class, please look that up. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to add a few more classes as well. If there's any questions on that report? Yeah, Jeff. Um is that uh, that new instructor? Is that at an intermediate level? Because I know someone three or four months ago spoke about a request or wanting that. Um, is this new person at that level, or is it a general? That's a great question. Um, I don't know the intensity level uh, that that they are teaching at, and they probably will adapt somewhat based on the the people that are taking that class. Mm -hmm. Is anybody in here taking that? Yeah, they just started. So, um, yeah, the best thing to do would be to uh, attend a class or check in at the front desk and give you. Um, unfinished business is next. I don't see anything on there. Okay, and then new business. The first one, a new business, is we're going to talk about Vivian Clayton's. Uh, letter she suggested we have an exploratory investigation to improve the air quality in a tight pool but were you basically asking about the temperature yeah it's it's we uh amended the the, rep the proposal to reflect the air temperature not air quality yeah yeah so just to give a, a little context to that, and then Vivian can talk a little bit more about uh, the proposal specifics, but I, as you all know, there is no uh, heating or cooling system within TICE. We have what's called the air handler system that uh, exchanges the air uh, from outside to in. Obviously, there's a lot of windows and door uh, roof panels that can open to exchange air. But there is no heating and cooling and, and that is based on the time when the, the facility was built. It couldn't meet energy efficient guidelines and uh, because of the all glass nature. So to run an air conditioning or a heating system would be you couldn't get it to an energy efficient standard. Uh, and the time the decision at the time was to go without. Uh, we have in, in relation to air quality, if you recall uh, in in 2017 added the UV system, the ultraviolet system. So prior to that, not only could it get very hot or cold, but you could have kind of an odor in there or feel like it, it uh, had an odor to it, um, hard to breathe. The UV system removes chloramines from the, the air, which is the byproduct of the chlorine disinfectant working in the pools. And that helps with kind of the air quality. So we've made strides there, but certainly during the summer, it can get you know well over 100 plus in the, the pools. And we've actually closed the pools at time just because of dangerous conditions for, for guards and people to be out. And that is just kind of the nature of that facility. 
Um, what Vivian is proposing is, is working with St. Mary's College to have some students do a, an investigatory um, research into what, what it would take or what the options might be. Do you want to explain that a little further? So, now let me just, I'm just going to broaden the context because um, in the three or four months since I uh, made this proposal, um, I just have a, a slightly expanded perspective on, on the issue that Jeff has explained. Um, so just two things to broaden the perspective. Uh, just recently this week, um, NASA and some government agencies separately came out with the data that the last eight years um, in the United States, and I think the world um, has experienced uh, the most, the highest heat uh, recording since um, 1880. So um, the trend that we saw this summer in September is probably going to continue and possibly expand. So um, the concern about what happens in, indoors to our, uh, our pools is um, of concern because the CDC has made it very clear that when you're over 65, um, vulnerability to heat uh, in immediate heat exhaustion is much higher. You know, we all have different physical conditions, taking medications, and um, just our own systems uh, could result in a pretty serious medical emergency. And uh, this is a primary concern to me, which I didn't really stress in my written proposal, um, but uh, the, the sudden onset when someone has like a heart attack, like what we observed with Damar Hamlin, um, for those of us who have been following, is very similar to what happens when you get a sudden attack of heat exhaustion, not even heat stroke. It's sudden. It's immediate and it's a medical emergency. And, you know, it's one thing if it happens on the side of the pool. It's another thing if it happens while someone's swimming. So, um, as Jeff said, on September 6th this year, the indoor pool reached 115 degrees. And two or three days before that, I actually have, I was just wondering what was happening that week because I wasn't there that day, but I was there two days before or a day, days before when it was 104 outside, I was reading my book. Um, I had number four position to get my lap lane and all of a sudden it's like that. I got lightheaded, I was reading a book and I couldn't, my eyes started to blur and I got simultaneously nauseous and I realized right away what was happening. I got up, I gave my number to the lifeguard. I said, I'm going in the vestibule there's air conditioning. I sat there for like five minutes and I completely recovered. And, you know, I'm a freshman in the ladder of aging. <laughs> and, you know, I just thought, wow, you know, this is, this really, we really have to pay attention to this. So I offered a proposal. Um, and today I, I'm offering two. That's um, because of things that Jeff has said, which I, I'll highlight. But basically, the model I'm proposing is um, innovative. It, there's no um, uh, sort of uh, cost, Golden Rain Foundation. And it's a, it's a model that's been used by SpaceX, where they um, recruit very high level engineering students who are in graduate school and invite them into uh, the project. Um, and, you know, these young minds who are right at the cusp of the latest technology offer their participation and insights into an established program. So, um, as I said in my proposal, the assistant dean of admissions at UC Berkeley School of Engineering has now moved to, Ber has now moved to Ross. <laughs> she, she has, um, she's a swimmer. And um, uh, she uh, has, she's very much in touch um, with the director of research. And um, I preliminarily asked if the school would be interested in offering us graduate students to come and just examine our structure and offer us 
um, suggestions. What's in it for them is they get class credit, and it's an in vivo process for them. It's not an academic book learned exercise. So schools are eager to place students in situations like us and um, offer their insights. Um, there's no fee we have to pay, and it's not binding in the sense that should, should we adopt this idea, they would write up a report and it could be shown uh, for future reference or just completely forgotten. Uh, but what it does is it moves the needle forward a little bit for us at a time when budgets have already been spoken for. Um, Golden Rain has a list of priorities that do reflect how to honor climate change, you know. But I really feel we need to do something about our, our facility. So that's number one. Um, however, Jeff has added a very true fact, which is limitations as to what kind of cooling and heating system can be installed. It's, it's accurate what he has shared with us. Um, I'm very relieved to know that our lifeguards in that little office have air conditioning. They can, you know, during their breaks, but we don't have that. <laughs> so, um, so my thought is that this idea is adopted might prove very limited in what they can offer us. However, they might have uh, some sort of engineering, uh, low tech suggestion that might be cost effective to offer us some sort of mitigation. There are heat pumps that may or may not um, uh, that both cool and heat facilities that may be acceptable under Title 22. I'm not an engineer person, I don't know. But um, I would like to propose this as just one little step forward. So, um, you know, as I said, I don't think there are any risks. Um, it's um, a mutually beneficial situation. However, the second proposal is more immediate and, and might be something we can implement without any external involvement. And that is that um, since we send out Nixle, is that the word? Am I using the right word? Um, when we have, um, you know, threatening events, floods, uh, power outages, if, if it, since 80 is actually the, the temperature that the CDC has offered as dangerous for people over 65. If the temperature indoors, there's that thermometer reaches 80 or 85, could a lifeguard call whoever, mod, you, Securitas, so that a Nixel could be sent out to the community that today the indoor pool temperature at this time is at this, and if you have, you know, it could be a pre-arranged wording. If you have a health condition or have concerns, uh, either come early or delay your arrival until the temperature goes down. Um, there are 800 people who move into Rossmore every year that are new. Those of us who are veterans of the pool, I now know, man, I ain't going near that place when the temperature is, you know, high. Um, but I have had that from experience. What about the 800 people a year who move here and want to use the pool? You have no idea until they get there. And as I said, what I'm concerned about is the sudden onset of this condition. On my watch on this committee, I would like to not have that an accident or an incident like that happen. So I have two, so it's two separate proposals. Um, one is more short term, which is until uh, uh, some sort of engineering intervention can be created or eliminated. Um, that's one like that. But the other proposal is more short term, which is just if we could get this on the Nixel um, thing and make it a standard and also a decision as to what temperature, regardless, will should be closed because I don't think you were comfortable, Jeff, last year with how close it got to. And um, yeah, so those that's where I rest my, my case. Thank you. So one of, <clears throat> just in conclusion, one of the things we're doing um, 
still being implemented and designed, but but getting very close is uh, under the web portal, my Ross Moore, there will be a communication piece in there. <clears throat> and residents can indicate if you want information on pools, if you want information on recreation events or in different sections. Um, so if you indicate you want information on pools, then that might be an avenue where we can send out information about pool temperature, air quality outside, or that sort of thing. We want to try and limit what we're using Pixel for to keep it more as an emergency type thing that applies to more residents rather than announcements. But uh, it would have the same effect as what you're talking about. How many people would read that, though? That's what I'm concerned. If you're uh, if you're a pool user and you're looking for that, then then I think you would be in tune with that. But if you're not a pool user and you're getting daily updates on the indoor pool temperature, it because we we can't target it, but we target this other. I see. Yeah, that's just it. Thank you, Joe. Um, any more discussion? Yes, Catherine. Uh, question for Vivian. Uh, I think I heard you say, but, but maybe I could ask just to be clear. Are there any downsides that you see for your uh, proposal with the engineering school? Any risks for us? The only downside that I see is that they're going to say there's nothing we can do, <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Um, but even if that were the case, we'd want the information. That's, yeah, you know, that's, that's what I feel is what's important. We as a group should not be afraid of information. Sure. And that's what they are offering us knowledge, which I don't feel unless you have a degree in engineering um, or want to spend the money to hire a professional engineering firm, we we would have access to. Mm -hmm. So I just want information. I want, okay, here's mm -hmm. the limitation of this building under Title 22. We've goofed. We, we can't add a traditional heating or air conditioning system. Is there anything else mm -hmm. out there that we don't know about? Um, and obviously, if if in the future we want to move forward on it, of course, we mm -hmm. would imagine we want to hire professional engineering uh, company who are licensed and, you know, blah, 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 to to really look into it. But this is just a preliminary, you know, mutually beneficial sort of project. And, you know, yeah. So their time is limited. They're on a semester system, which starts next week. Uh, it ends May 5th. Um, I believe that they feel they could probably provide us information within uh, by our next meeting in eight weeks. You know, we'll just know. So, um, you know, so any other? So I think process wise, we we'd first have to get a proposal from them that kind of an, an engagement with the, the school and with the, their department to see. Are they, you know, what, how would they propose doing that? What access would they need to have to the facility to as build drawings to, um, you know, the mechanical room? Would they be you know, testing anything? Is, is it just looking at that type of building and what is mm -hmm. that? We need to know a little bit more about what they would need in order to, to do that and then what our the outcome would be. Okay. And we, as we engage them, um, not to put a wet blanket on things, we'd have to get into stuff like if, if they are going to be on site, stuff like insurance and all of that fun stuff. For them, for them. Uh -huh. So um, just this this sort of engagement letter, would this then be brought to a committee or could it be hand? First, we would just vote on whether we could start the process with it. And then this then would just be a more informal. Yeah, I think you're, the committee can, can vote if you're, they're interested in in that. And then uh, you and I could probably work together on getting something from them to see what what level of support they can provide and uh, take it from there. Okay. All right. Yeah, yes, Catherine. I just wonder if uh, you, you didn't mention uh, staff impact, but I would think that'd be something we'd want to know too. Uh, how how involved if the staff need to be involved? How involved doing what and how much time would that take? I would think that would be important. Yeah, that would be kind of part of their commitment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, what 
what would they need from us material wise and observation. Any other comment? Nope. More discussion on Vivian's proposal. Jeff, can we just bring in some big blowers? We've uh, brought in some pretty good sized bands before, place it right near the door in the, the alley. Uh, they're really loud and don't offer a ton of help, but it, it moves hot air. Right. When it's that hot, you know, moving it. And would you consider um, would you consider at some point making a decision as to at what temperature point the facility in fact should be closed for that day? So we haven't had an exact it's this temperature and then we're, we're cutting it off. Uh, we did that with air quality. We said if it hits 150, I think close down the, the outdoor pools. Uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea to do for the indoor pools. Uh, 150? No, air quality. <laughs> I hope we don't hit 150. <laughs> uh, so we, you know, we, we could do that. I would say you'd want to do that in, in kind of an overview of the pool rules. Yeah, I guess. I Got it. Uh, arbitrarily, I just kind of said it, it's unhealthy and we're to a point, you know, when it's excessive days type of deal. If it hits, you know, over 100 for a day, that's okay. But when it's 115, that's appropriate to close down. Yeah. USC School of Terminology, where I got my PhD, um, actually uh, wrote an article about air quality and its effect on cognition and constant exposure to very high level or even moderate to high levels of um, pollution. The air quality um, is a precursor to unfortunately dementia. So um, the scientist that's leading that study down there uh, made a point of saying in the article that that's why he lives in North Pasadena. <laughs> he chose that location so that he would not be exposed on going to the poor quality in the basin of Los Angeles, you know, and he's 80 years old now. So he, yeah, so that's a good idea. <laughs> Richard, um, it, is there an option? Well, okay. Opening the panel, the roof panels at night during heat, high heat times, presumably lowers the temperature. Would, are we talking about closing down the pool for a whole day, anticipating uh, a spike in temperature, or are we talking about as needed? As needed. So when it is excessive heat, we do exactly that. We'll open the, the roof panels as, as wide as they can go at night. So that way, when you arrive in the morning, it's, it's cooler and it stays cool as long as possible. Um, and we, you know, we keep the panels kind of cracked and try and get airflow through there as much as possible. Um, so it's, it's typically, if we do close it, it's that later in the day, the three, four o'clock hour, it's just been sitting and, you know, starting to bake all day. Any more discussion? I'm not sure. Of a... So I don't think we need a, a vote per se, but um, I think the next step would be uh, if we can engage with the uh, college there in see how interested they are and what they would provide. Okay. 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 Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Larry. That's very interesting. Next, we are going to talk about uh, the recommendations. Uh, to, are we going to are, discuss and make a recommendation to the policy committee for a new combined charter for AAC and FCAC, which would be us and the facility center to the fitness center um, advisory committee. So this item was discussed yesterday at the fitness advisory committee and they voted to, to recommend a policy that the committees be combined. They did want to take a future time to look a little bit more closely at the charter and they identified uh, roles and responsibilities. But as far as the concept of combining the two committees, they uh, voted to recommend. 
The reason this is before you right now is there's an advisory committee for both aquatics and fitness, as, as you're aware. Um, they were created to address the specific kind of operational uh, and program and budgetary level of service needs for each individual um, uh, facility. Since we did the renovation of the fitness center and really Tice's is combined into one facility, people may go there specifically for aquatics or go there specifically for, for fitness related, but many do both and you all have the same check-in points. It's the same kind of overall operation. Uh, and many of the topics that you deal with is the same kind of topics that the fitness advisory committee deals with. We are at a point too where both committees, you have a, a membership of eight members plus uh, a board liaison, but both committees have enough people that are moving off the committee that those remaining could combine into a, to one committee. Over the past several years, especially during COVID, but even prior and, and since, we get to a point where there's not always a lot of uh, information or agenda items that we could provide to you that, that really is, is meaningful for your, your gathering. Sometimes we're, we're kind of fishing for some ideas to put on your agenda, to be honest with you. Uh, to produce these agendas certainly takes a lot of uh, executive services time, it takes the, the management time, uh, but more importantly, it, it takes, takes a lot of uh, your time. By combining, we can address the same issues that come up, you know, the level of services provided, the rules for specifically for the pools or for fitness, um, the topics that come up, family swim time, um, the music, all of those kinds of things can still be addressed just by a combined committee. So that's kind of the genesis of this. Um, in your packet, there is a, uh, both the existing level of, or existing uh, advisory committee charter for aquatics, but also a uh, draft of what a combined charter may look like. It has basically the same uh, duties and responsibilities, purpose and responsibilities to evaluate the uh, programs and equipment uh, to provide safe, enjoyable environment, strive for a broad mix of programs and services, monitor guests, caregivers, the guest policy, uh, assist with clubs and organizations that use the facilities, so the kind of the list goes on, but it's very similar to what you, you do now. What would be proposed is to stay up the same makeup of an eight member committee with uh, a board liaison, have the same kind of meetings schedule. The membership would have those that have either a focus on both aquatics and fitness as uh, one uh, speaker said today, they do both. A lot of you use both the fitness center and aquatics, but make sure that both aquatics and fitness interests are represented on the committee. Um, you would serve the same term and so forth. Uh, it would still be an advisory to the GRF board and GRF board committees for decision-making. The process moving forward, this is not something that happens just by your next meeting, but you would make a recommendation to the policy committee, which is a GRF board uh, committee. They would meet and, and look at the charter and, and any recommendations that you have in relation to that. They, uh, once they come to a conclusion, they make a recommendation to the full board. Any changes to policy goes to the board twice and they meet uh, monthly at the end of the month. So it's introduced at one meeting and then adopted. So really this is something that would likely go into effect with the new kind of calendar year starting in July. Any questions on that? Hillside and Dollar are animals, are different kind of animals, right? I mean, Tice is part of the fitness center. Does that make a difference on um, how much time would be spent on an agenda with issues related to the outdoor pools? I, I don't think so. I mean, things like family swim time come up uh, a lot. Um, rules pertaining to the specific uh, pools. 
um, the, the coverage that we did this last year with no lifeguard on duty, all of those things that, that come up and come before this committee would still come between that, that joint committee. We would still have aquatics focused uh, discussions and members on the committee. Uh, so yeah, they would just like they do today. Thank you. Um, two questions. Uh, I'm wondering, Jeff, if we know what the lifeguards uh, opinion is about this and also fitness center staff. So the fitness center manager typically attends the fitness advisory committee and they prepare the report that uh, you see in, attached in the packet. Beyond that, they have very little even knowledge of what's going on with the committee. Um, there's not a lot that that impacts their day to day work and, and operation with the uh, residents. With the aquatics, uh, Hideo is the head lifeguard. She manages the lifeguards, but they don't offer a lot of programs other than some life, some uh, swim lessons right now. All of the, the uh, classes are done through fitness. So, you know, other than support that you all provide to the lifeguards, and I know you interact with them and get information and are very helpful in, in issues that they arise, they likewise are not familiar with what comes out of the committee too much. It doesn't impact their day to day. And I would suspect the support that they get from you would, would continue with any type of um, so I have a comment and then my second question. Um, my comment is that I think the optics of doing this are important if we were to move ahead. And I think that in, in the newspaper and in whatever general public announcements, as well as what is said to the staff, including the lifeguards, would be really important to emphasize that aquatics and the fitness center hold equal attention and equal priority. Because I think it would be pretty easy for um, the pools and especially the lifeguards to feel like somehow they were they were being put into a second class position, which I know none of us would want. We we would definitely make sure that that's because that's definitely not the case. And, and I, I know, but again, I think optics are yeah. um, so. And my second question is. If we were to move ahead and combine the committees, I'm wondering in your experience, Jeff, um, if or if you know of times when actually the interests of the fitness center and the aquatics center, if you will, compete, and what would we do about that if that were the case? So I think your your agenda items, um, you know, some may still cover both. But for example, today you're you're talking about music specifically for the pools. I wouldn't combine that and say music at Tice, because the interest of music in the fitness center is very different than music within Tice. So I think making sure that the agenda items pertain to the issue, even though the members that are going to be discussing that are both aquatic and you know fitness, but residents as they did today could still come and speak to those various um, issues. Okay. Good. Thank you. Anybody else have I have a comment. Um, Jeff, our general manager has outlined the pros and cons of this proposal. And I would like to add one more. Reducing the workload of GRF should be a goal for all of us. With a lighter workload, we would see less turnover and better productivity from GRF and MOD. The GRF portion of our coupon increased by 13% this year. Part of that increase was because of staff turnover and training costs. Jeff stated there would be minimal cost savings, and that's true. The staff will be getting paid the same uh, with two committees or just one committee. But we may be able to keep them working for us longer, thus reducing turnover and training costs. That's my point. I have to write a report for the board. I have to have it in a week, I believe. 
So I would encourage any more comments or concerns or discussion. Um, you know, since um, the, I don't have an opinion yet as to yes or no, but um, what I'd be concerned about is if, uh, if this took effect and it clearly was actually creating more work and the meeting was longer than either of the two separate, would we be able to go back and be separated? The, the charter can always be amended. Um, I, I like to say there's nothing new in, in Rossmore and that we've thought of or done and redone many things. So it could, if it was found that, hey, this just isn't the right path, or maybe there's another path to go down. Um, so no, nothing is, policy can be changed. There's a process for doing that. See, I'm sympathetic with your observation that uh, so I've been on the board of the, of the aquatics committee since June 2021, I think. Um, yeah, it's um, this like year and a half. And um, we've had quite a few transitions. Uh, Brian Stack resigned in, and hadn't quite finished his term, and then Daryl had to resign. Um, so there was two discontinuities, and um, it it and it, it gave the impression of uh, you know reorganization or uh, not much was going on. Um, but I I wonder if that, that's a good given that for many of us that's all the length of time we've been on this committee. If that's the way to judge that nothing is happening for us. You know? So um, but you have a a broader perspective. So was that that struggle has that been also pre pre Brian and you know I just need to So we've we've had some continuity on the committees for quite some I think Brian was there for about eight years mm -hmm. years yeah. Um, yeah. quite a while. Right. Um, the fitness advisory committee we had Carol Green for a long time and then we've we you know we had uh, um, Catherine for significant period of time and then there's been some um, you know struggles to find leadership for those uh, like your committee so you know that that's the ongoing challenge to find people that are are interested and want to stay on the, the committees but that's that's really not the driving force of this mm -hmm. this is i mean your committee hasn't met since september and on your agenda are three items important mm -hmm. items but three items uh fitness advisory hadn't met so for the same time period, they had two items on their agenda, um, one to do with massage and the other to do with forming this joint committee. And that's very, very typical that there's usually, you know, a couple of items. Uh, and since there is overlap and commonality, it, it seems like you would be able to address those with one committee. I'm just struck. The, the other thing, again, it's a qualitative comment, not a not a yes or no uh, quantity, more quantitative. Just um, the two facilities as they are joined there at that doorway, nevertheless, um, seem are are quite distinct. You know, and um, uh, that's all. That's I'm very struck by this. Catherine has actually used the word optics. That uh, and. Um, there's certainly a lot of overlap in people who use both, but I do feel populations who veer one way or another, there's a, 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 there's a real difference too, you know, um, at each end. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, bridging, meeting everybody's needs through one committee is, is something that I'm grappling with too, um, you know, so. Um, <coughs> Okay, so that's that's just quality of the comments. Yeah, I, I don't have a, a a view one way or another yet. This is kind of it first um, looks like if it's ain't broke, don't fix it. It's um, not clear why the aquatics committee, which I believe has been separate from the fitness center from the beginning, 
why they would want to be together. And you're saying um, that the reason that I'm hearing is they don't have enough on their agendas at the committee meeting, so we should get them together so there'll be more things on the agenda. Not sure if that's a good reason. I mean, I don't think that either committee, um, they're there if there are things that come up, they're there. It doesn't mean they have to be busy every single meeting with a lot of things on the agenda. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm not certain that I feel that they should be combined. I don't see yet see a good reason. We're not, um, it, it gets discounting either individual items that come up that are pertinent to aquatics or, or fitness. All of those items will still be addressed and you can still have members, uh, whether it's members that come from this committee or fitness existing or future members that have background and knowledge in, in various uh, aquatics, fitness or both. Um, that could address any of the, the issues that do come up or you know, agenda items. It's just really looking at efficiency of the operation in, in your time and, and our time. The thing about, I know I read the proposals. Um, so the number of people per representing fitness and swimming are going to be limited to three people, three eat, right? Isn't that three? To make a total of six six people, this is the non Golden Ring Foundation. Uh, so, how would voting then work? You know, if a proposal was made and put up for vote, what what would be the deciding factor if it got passed or not? Am I reading that correct, Jeff? Or we have how many members on a tip? We see we now have five. Um, right? Don't we have five? So, yeah, so to answer Jeff's question, um, all of the committees have different membership counts. So policy and planning have four members, just four. Uh, so it really takes a toll on swaying one way or another. It could. Um, audit committee has a variance of seven to nine members due to helping out with traveling um, during the year because they meet so infrequently. So each committee really has reasoning on their charter as to their membership. Mm -hmm. Voting really shouldn't be looked at as um, a, a potential um, a failure of voting, but I would say the point of both memberships either being um, knowledgeable in either or subject, perhaps that's in the um, committee. Charter in there. Yeah, so I, I don't think in the regards to the membership for voting, um, the subject matter from what I'm gathering from this charter would be addressed by all members. Um, the notes that would be more knowledgeable in the pool with the, uh, the fitness center. So we would have a makeup that would have we would look for people that had interest in, in both, but make sure that it, there's equal representation or interest of aquatics folks and fitness folks. So you won't have a committee that is just all fitness users and no. Yeah, yeah. Richard. Yes. I'm all in favor of this. I use both. Makes all the sense in the world. Yes. I view it as one facility. I, I do have a, um, a comment um, and I also have a question that I'm asked lightly. <laughs> um, the comment is that I would think that when, uh, if we move ahead, that when we are um, orienting people to the new committee, which can include those of us who continue, that, that the orientation and the understanding be that we are serving the interests of the fitness community and the aquatic community even though our loyalty may be to one or the other person's vote. It just seems to me, because I know I don't, I don't recall that I got much of an orientation at all when I came onto this committee, except there were friendly comments made, but there wasn't any kind of an orientation. It doesn't have to be heavy, but just, you know, I think some kind of orientation would be helpful, and I think that would be a good thing to include, that the representation and the interests of both communities be served. The second question is that I asked politely um, is whether or not there's been a name chosen and if it's in the material I'm sorry that I don't recall what it is 
there has not been a name chosen. Well, who gets top billing? Then? <laughs> In this piece of paper, it says aquatic first. Just saying. <laughs> this piece of paper, can I speak? Sure. Um, I'm, I'm the uh, chairman of the proposed charter. Okay. That somebody created. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. the chairman of the policy committee, and I'm just here so that you can better understand what we're doing. Um, but I'm just going to say, it does say quiet. It does what? A quiet. I don't know if that was alphabetical or how it was done, but it says aquatic and fitness advisory committee chair. Okay. <laughs> well, that's optics. That's a good thing. That's, you know, wherever that goes, again, that's one of my concerns. I, I have to disagree. I don't think they are both the same as Mike feels. I think they're they're in the same spot geographically, but the pool could have been anywhere else, could have been separated from the fitness. The fitness center is a very big, varied operation. And the pools, as um, Jill suggested, there are three pools, not just one pool. So I, I think they're quite separate. And um, <clears throat> it does, so it doesn't, for me, go without saying that they should be combined. I didn't catch the last part, Liz. Uh, Liz, I'm sorry. You think they should be combined? No. Or not, combined. no not necessarily, no. Mm -hmm. I don't think it goes without saying that they are the same, one and the same. They, they, mm -hmm. they occupy a similar spot. Yes. One, one of the pools does. Yeah. It's important to note, I know by combining these, it feels like something might be getting lost by one or the other, but it, this doesn't take away or change or the get, take influence away the nature of the individual facilities and the use of those facilities. So the aquatics is not getting swallowed up by fitness or vice versa. They're still <clears throat> operated the same way they are today. <clears throat> Nothing changes in terms of that. Jeff, did the uh, fitness committee vote? On this? They voted on this, uh, and they all members recommend that were present. I think there were four members present recommended that it be uh, combined. Combined, but there was a, a caveat about they wanted to go over the rules first. They not not that they wanted to first, but they want to go over the charter at some point and better understand the charter and and potentially any um, amendments to that. And how would that happen? So it can happen a couple of ways. Um, once formed, the committee can look at the charter itself, the kind of a, the combined committee could then look at the charter and see if there's any changes that they, they feel should be made. Um, or the committees before we get to that point could um, individually look at it. Because like I said, this won't take effect probably until the year of July. Yeah. All right. Do I have a motion for a vote on this matter? Well, come on, people. We have to have a vote. We can say we spoke our mind. We thought about it. We can tell them we want to think more. Want to read more? What? I'll make a motion on the vote. Okay. We have a second. To the policy Recommending to the policy committee, and I'm voting in favor of it. All right. Do I have a second? Second it. No more discussion. Any more discussion on this? Take a vote? Yes, Catherine. Uh, I would also like for us, <coughs> us, uh, the Aquatics Committee, to be able to look at the chart. It is in your packet too. Okay. Thank. You. Yeah, please. Okay. We're going to do a roll call vote. Robinson Walker? Yes. Eason? Yes. Carter? Yes. Clayton? Yes. Rudder? No. Wright? Yes. It carries. Thank you all. Next on our new business is review and consider amendments to the new music policy for high school. 
So I should say that this this isn't a new music policy. This was something that was a, a interim until we can get to uh, your committee to uh, discuss uh, the appropriate method moving forward. How this came about, and I know many um, residents have said, well, we shouldn't change something because of one resident. This is not because of one resident. Uh, certainly, it, it maybe bubbled up from, from one, but there have been, and since uh, we have initiated this, there have been others that have said, I appreciate not having music. Certainly, there are many that do like music. Um, all of you in Rossmore know very well that there are varying opinions on how a shared facility should be used. And it's just always a struggle to find that balance to try and meet um, different interests. As was detailed earlier, the previous process, how things were done is people can come in and request to be put in the queue, uh, if you will, for playing a 30 minute segment of a preferred station. Typically those are like the, the golden oldies or a jazz type station, or I think there's about three that they, they bounce between. And that will then be played, the lifeguard will turn it on, play it for that period of time, and then the next person could request uh, something different, or some people can request that during this 30 minute segment, no music be played. Um, because we had some, some conflicts uh, and we didn't have a chance to get to you uh, for a period of time, what we said was on a daily basis between 11 and 1 that there wouldn't be any music played. This gives people a chance. If you don't like music, you can't swim because of a medical condition or because of just your preference, whatever. You can come during that segment of time and there won't be music. You won't have that conflict. If you like music and you want music and you want to request a segment of different kind of music, there's the rest of the time that you can come. This didn't impact any classes. We, at that point, we didn't have classes between 11 and 1, but also we said if there was a class added, like now the deep water uh, exercise, that this wouldn't apply to that because music's being played for a specific purpose, a specific class. So. When we have a class scheduled between 11 and 1 that requires music, we still play the music for that class. We're not telling any class that they have to go without music. People can still come during that time if they want. They can use, there's different uh, waterproof uh, um, pods that you can get, and you can still listen to music if you'd like. Um, the pools are open right now 15 hours a day. And we're talking about two hours a day that there isn't music. So the rest of the 13 hours, there is music that can be played and is played. So it's a segment of time to try and balance that out. Some options you have moving forward. Um, you can revert to the previous uh, policy or system where, and we didn't have formal rule in place. That's why I, I did this on an interim basis until we get to you, because we didn't have actually, a, I looked through the rules for the pools and, and we have a, a thing in the rules that says no personal uh, music device that, you know, like a boom box or something can be played at the outdoor pools, but we don't address music at Tice in the, uh, in the rules. So uh, you can adopt a uh, a policy that says music is per request on 30 minute basis for any time of the day. And when there's a class, the class dictates what music is. You can leave it kind of as we've morphed into where there's a time during the day when there's no music. You can um, dictate that it's between those three stations. Uh, you can vary the time. There, you have a lot of freedom here. I will just suggest that there are a variety of interests that you're trying to balance. Um, so you're, you're not going to make everybody happy no matter what you do here. And that's just kind of the, the nature of it. But um, suggest you try and find a balance. Was there a reason for those, those two hours, 11 or it was a, a time when there weren't any classes scheduled and it 
was time kind of midday because a lot of people come in the later afternoon that uh, are interested in, in having music. I'm saying that knowing that there's a lot of you in here that may come between 11 and 1 and want music, but it, it was uh, like an open time. Um, I have not heard about this queue till now. Did you sign up? How does it work? Usually people will come and they'll talk to the lifeguard on duty and they'll say, I'd like to have such and such music playing. And they'll say, well, somebody has already requested that. We don't want to occupy a lot of lifeguard times right now. We have, because the pools are closed, we have more lifeguards on duty. But if there's only one lifeguard, I don't want them running back and forth, changing the music. Uh, but this gives them a chance, plays for a half hour, and then they switch it up if somebody wants something different. Can there be several people in that queue? There can be, and it's again, it's not super formal. Um, you know, they they'll come, they'll talk to lifeguard, they'll make note of it, and track the time. So, what happens if two people show up? I'm picking up on yeah. Richard's comment, and one person says, "I want 30 minutes of new music," and the other person says, "I want the latest hits." You know, what? How does so then doesn't that fall on the lifeguard shoulders to have to mitigate, you know, the, the That's part of why we went to this system is that we were getting to a point where you can't, because of some issue, maybe a medical issue, you, you don't like any music playing at all. So you come and there's already music playing, somebody has requested that. Well, you're stuck. You got to come back another time or you can't. Uh, if you if you requested silence and then the next person comes and they want music they have to wait that 30 minute period this just gives you a chance to know when there will be music and when there won't so uh please correct me if my memory of this is in, is incorrect but in the emails i've read or gotten um was there a prior survey done about, I know there certainly was a, lots of surveys about family sweat, but about music at the pool? I seem to have read that in a prior survey, 50% wanted music and 50% form, this formal survey wanted silence. Did that exist or not? Did I? I think you're uh, referring to a survey that was done for the fitness center. Ah. And the fitness center balanced between music, no music, music, no music, survey. I, I, <laughs> okay. So we don't really, for the pools, we don't have a, a formal, we had not yet done a formal uh, survey like that, like we did. Right? We did not do a survey for yeah, the, the yeah, pools. Yeah. Um, it didn't work very well for the fitness center, the, yeah. the data that it provided. Yeah. It did work for the family fund though. The survey did work yeah, for the family. You did receive some. We had, we had, we had a, a yes or no. Yeah. Uh, um, the individual who this bubble from, uh, if I remember right, she likes to use hillside in the summer. So I want to be very, very careful not to, and there's been a lot of focus on an individual. All this right. is not one individual. Okay. And over there, the period of time, the lifeguards will tell you there's other people that do not, you just heard from a, a different resident yeah. that prefer silence. There are people for varying reasons, maybe they just don't like the selection of music, that do not like music when they're swimming. Okay. Question. Yes. Uh, Jeff, do you know how many complaints approximately we've gotten since the lifeguards instituted the two hours of uh, of no music between eleven and one? Uh, a lot of people were patient leading up to this, and and I don't know that they're complaints. They just want to voice how they. They think it should be music or, or not. Um, so I think you heard from just about everybody today, yeah. and you received copies of emails that yeah. we received. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So we don't have a sense, and and please correct me if I'm right, but so we really don't have a sense of whether we 
um, arrived at a solution that was okay for most people when we said the two hours will be uh, music free. We don't have any sense of that. I, I, we haven't tallied how many people have commented one way or the other on that. Um, change is difficult. And yeah, well, oh, sure. And it's something there. And some people that I've heard from think that we're cutting out music altogether. Some people think that we won't play music during uh, a, a fitness class now, uh, an aquatic class now. This is just from 11 to 1. If there's no fitness class going on, there wouldn't be, be music. It doesn't affect any other time. Well, that's exactly it. I, I think what you've highlighted is normal human nature behavior when there's a change. And I myself, um, you know, seeing the pool, the uh, someone stood outside the pool. I forget which one of you. Yeah, right. Um, you know, uh, by the time, I mean, when the information spread about this change, it already had the impression I was getting from people talking to me was that music was going to be eliminated completely. I mean, it just ballooned as a misinformation. Some people knew exactly what it was. Other people, I'm just saying, you know, knew. So if policy is going to be implemented, I propose that we take it step by step and do it, even though it gets delayed in the final decision, that we actually do like what we did for Family Swim and just do a poll, put it in the Rossmore News, get people to reply to it, have feelings about it, so that we really get, you know, more data before I, I would feel more comfortable getting data. I mean, there's only one person here who stood here and talked about liking silence. Personally, I can go either way. I don't have an investment on either way. Um, and I swim a lot. I like the music. I like the silence. I mean, I'm not tied to either one. But I would, I think if we're going to make a policy that um, I would want it to get more, you know, I think that, so that that's where I stand. And I'm would like to make a motion for that. Um, it does, well, I don't know who, did you create the, the um, survey for Family Swim about eight, nine months ago? Yeah, just, and you know, it should be there like twice and then we can vote on it next, our next meeting. I really do feel that that's the only equitable way. But we, I think that's a little, I mean, if it's true that there's a, a Quite a lot, large number of people who don't want music. Um, then giving two hours every day over to this, but we don't really know. I mean, if we make, um, we need to have. I think a system where if it is a very large minority who do like music, then not having music for two hours per day in prime time is also not fair. So I, I, I'm not sure how a poll, a poll will um, say, a poll won't solve that problem. A poll will let us know. Then we won't know how, how do we have two hours for people who don't like music? Do we have 30 minutes? Do we have more time, less time? Well, I think the family yeah. swim model has really stood, stood uh, a good uh, stood its stead, might say, um, that you no, know, there were a lot of people who did not, who objected to it, but there were many people who benefited from it. And it was during the week, it is two hours, right? 11 to 1. Um, two hours is just maybe that's an arbitrary amount of time, but it's there's a standard already set for it. But, you know, the question is, um, you know, is there an, are there enough people who, you know, I would, uh, who um, will show up during those times who really want the silence? And how many people who are disturbed by it um, uh, are coming actually at other times in swimming when there is music? I mean, you know, so I just think having more data allows us more substance to make a decision that's, uh, you know, I think there was the same problem with Family Swim and you who have witnessed several 
trials of this, as you indicated, you know, we're willing to find again. It was the same thing. So the diversity needs to be respected, I think. And but I want to find out: is there diversity? I mean, you know, and I don't know. There was only one person here who spoke up for silence. So. And she said she said she would like she wouldn't mind quiet music during that time. She did. But she, did, she didn't say that she didn't. Yeah, she, she, she said, said she, she wouldn't mind quiet. She said she wouldn't mind quiet music during that. And your point was about nine turns and like music. Sorry, what? Yeah. yeah. But may I ask a question? Oh, hi, Kim. Yeah. Question. Um, I know you're watching the clock, but I want to um, bring up something. I think it was in 2015 when I was in on the Aquatics Committee. Maybe it was earlier because it was before the fitness center had been renovated and there was a music controversy and we found out that there was one speaker that was directed toward the warm pool and another speaker directed toward the exercise pool and so when the lifeguards switched off one side and it was they would switch off the lap pool side and it really made a difference for the impact of noise when you were swimming. I don't know if we still have two switches. At that time, um, I, yeah, I remember that those discussions, it, the interest was the lap swimmers didn't want music, right? Yeah, yeah. and that might not be true. Yeah, I, I've been in the water since I was five. I've swum internationally. I've never been anywhere where there wasn't music. I do 200 to 300 laps and work out. We don't listen to music on, on that side. But when I go to the jacuzzi, I like the music. <laughs> I listen to the music. And if somebody came in and they had a medical condition and you go to the lifeguard or you queue up and you get your half an hour of quiet, it makes perfect sense to me. That's certainly an option is to... We haven't ever publicized the queue system. I heard about it today. Yes. Yeah. I go to the pool all the time. I think we need to publicize the queue system and let everybody know that that is a vehicle for music or science. I agree completely. Who was the, the first speaker? Yeah. Uh, Virginia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wanted to ask a question. No, hang on. No, sorry. No, you, you can listen now. That's it, Nancy. Um, Jeff had told us that the lifeguards were getting a little overwhelmed by the request for the queue. And so we want to consider that also. But I wanted to say, no matter what our decision is, there will still be a problem. We are not going to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. We're going to make a decision. This is how it's going to go. Mm -hmm. And this is our, our decision, mm -hmm. what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to misrepresent the um, have just getting requests every 30 minutes or people signing up for a, queue every 30 minutes is not an issue for the lifeguard when it is conflict that or putting on taking it off that kind of thing that that becomes an issue well that's our job uh, is to make but, sure those issues but if there is a if there is a process where people can sign up for 30 minute sections and you've already requested you requested well it's going to be an hour for you that that's fine uh, or if somebody comes in and says they want silence and they can tell them, well, two people have already requested, so it's going to be an hour before they're silenced. That's okay, too. As long as there is a process that has been approved, then they have something to fall back on. Because they can say that's the adopted policy is that you can request a half hour as soon as your time comes up. Well, where, they, where the life first yeah. struggle is there's if they don't have something formal like that to fall back on. Okay. So that's why we implemented the current policies so they they do have something solid um and then until we brought it to you so what you're saying is possibly we could start out with that approach using the um Q. 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 and then you know if it thunders into you know a problem then do a poll then we could do a poll you can certainly do that yeah so good idea you know that which is the most efficient way to start yeah I think. Yeah. So, uh, from my understanding on the table, we have a suggestion to uh, use the queue. And if there are no 
issues after that, then we can just stick with it. If there are, then we can have a poll. Okay. Could we have a motion to vote on that? What happens to the two hours? The current two hours of silence. Right. That would be gone. Back to music. That, go that was just temporary. That was a that was an interim yeah. uh, thing, but was put up uh, since there was no committee meeting. Right. Right. Yeah. But we're saying in the potential motion that we would not include that. No, it would be gone. That would be gone. That if a person wanted to swim in silence, they could sign up on the queue and can I have the next 30 minutes quiet, please? My motion that we address it in that way, you have to proceed to what you said. Okay. <laughs> You've said it so well. <laughs> Could you repeat? Uh, the, the motion was to um, uh, eliminate the uh, two hour of the silence uh, just now and recommend to our swimmers that if they need silence to ask the lifeguards and for the next 30 minutes to, be, to get into the queue uh, and their 30 minutes is quiet or no music. If I may re um, state your motion. Uh, eliminate the two hour of silence or recommend to swimmers that if they need silence to use the queue system. Yes. Does that summarize the intent? I think so, yes. Okay. And Clayton, you propose that motion? I did. Is Let's there a second? Second. second. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Certainly. Okay. Walker? Justin Walker? Uh, yes. You guys in? Yes. Charter? Yes. Clayton? Yes. Brother? Yes. Wright? Yes. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you all. Our next regular meeting is Thursday, March 9th at 1.30 here in the boardroom. Richard, I'm sorry. Um, I'm wondering, I see there's not uh, a, a new business item uh, about uh, electing you as chair or you being nominated. And the position of chair is actually the board president. Okay. Um, is the, okay. Or, or appoints the chair and then is confirmed at the board meeting. So, okay. But we are looking for a secretary. <laughs> And all that has to happen. Somebody has to raise their hand and say, I'll do it. Huh. All right. I will be emailing you all and trying to encourage somebody to say yes to this. 